This exercise is concerned with drawing a geological cross-section from a profile that shows the surface geology in terms of different rock types represented by the colours and the orientation of bedding shown by these tadpoles. I'm going to go through the uh, process of drawing a sketch cross-section. It's the sort of thing that we do before we embark on more precise ways of section construction. And the objective is to just get an idea of the overall structure. And we can see straight away that the bedding has variable orientation and that as we go across the profile, um, the same unit, for example, this dark blue uh, panel, appears several times. So put those two pieces of information together, the variable dip and the repetition in our transect of rock units, suggest that the succession involves folding. So we'll take that idea and run with it when we draw our cross section and we're going to assume in the first instance that it's only folding that's going on and there's no faulting. So let's see if we can draw our cross section using that basic idea, folds alone. Well the first thing to decide is where to start and that's actually a critical decision in terms of making the process fairly efficient and very rarely is it a case of starting at one end or other of the cross section. Let's try and be a little bit smarter than that. So let's look at the profile. Well, let's just take a walk across here and we can see we've got more or less the same units. We crossed the dark blue once in here, but as we go from here, we go from brown to light blue, dark blue, light blue, yellow, and out again. Um, ah, look, there may be a fault involved, but we'll keep that up our sleeve. But we can see that uh, through this section in here, it's this part that shows the greatest variety of rock type. So we're going to start in here. OK, well, let's get going. And if this is a rock succession going from brown to blue to dark blue, light blue, yellow, what we can see is that as we come across this yellow, that we go back into light blue and dark blue. So there's essentially a symmetry here about this yellow unit. So that would suggest we have some kind of fold closure. But it's quite difficult to see whether it closes downwards or upwards because the dips on either side are essentially parallel to one another. So if there's a fold here, let's see if there's another fold if we keep going in this direction. And I can see that the beds dip in distinctly different directions. So if I bring out that boundary to be essentially tracking that bed dip like this and this one to be something like this, then it really looks like this package is going to come over something like this. So straight away, we can see that we found an antiform. And that would imply that the symmetry across here is actually driven by a sinform. So this is going to come down something like that. So this bed is going to come down and then it's going to presumably come around the other side, something like that. So quite quickly we can get into the idea of what the structure is doing. Now I find it useful to continue to extrapolate the rock units into the sky. And if I do this coming down in here, I can see this is heading straight for this dip that's dipping back uh, towards the south-southwest. So presumably we've got another stru fold structure in here, which means that the yellow doesn't come down to outcrop directly. It's going to do something like that. So let's just track that on. We've got a sinform here, and we've got an antiform here, and another sinform here. So it's a, it's a waveform where we alternate between sinforms and antiforms. And that means that as we go this way, we'd expect to see another antiform. And that fits because we're going essentially into what amounts to deeper rocks coming up from underneath in here. Again, what we can do is use this information as we go from light blue, dark blue, light blue. This brown unit presumably therefore sits underneath. So again, I'm going to take that down and around the fold structures, we begin, we've begun to interpret something like this. Oops, let's get that a bit tighter into our um, 
axial trace uh, for this antiform. So there we go, let's just see how this goes round. And therefore, this boundary is going to come down, and we use that information, it's going to come round like this, and that's going to come over. Now what's interesting here is that we're trying to bring this down into the ground, but as we come in this direction, the next piece we've got of this dark blue is right over here. So we need to think a little bit more carefully. And I'm going to be guided by these dips. So let's just, have, and I'm going to use the boundary of the top of the brown in here, guided by the dips. So I'm just going to quickly sketch perpendiculars to these dip directions in here. And I'm going to use that to say that in this panel in here, these dips are going like that. And then by here, they're essentially like that. And then in this position, presumably, they're going to come round something like this. So it means that if we use that as a guide, you might want to pull that a little bit further back like this, then this is going to come around, across, not quite come to outcrop, and then come up again, something like that, and we can take this boundary around. Something like that. So. I could adjust that a bit to honor some of these thicknesses a bit better, but that gives us an idea. In other words, you've got sort of like a knee type of uh, kink in here as this layer comes horizontal and back round again. All the layers go horizontal and back round again. So we can use this to help us go around. Again, I'm going to continue to sketch the uh, yellow units in now to put up into the sky what's going on. So we'll just take this around fairly roughly in here and it by the time we get into this position, we'd expect this layer to be coming right down into here. And clearly it isn't. Something like that. So in here, there's no outcrop of this. So this must actually come down and do, actually come further across and do something like that to honor this dip. So it doesn't come into outcrop. So in other words, we found another sin form in this position, antiform through here. So that's a sort of a first pass at some of these, and we might want to tidy it up now to try and get these thicknesses a bit more sensible. Again, let's push our structure further down at depth. It's going to come round, and then presumably it's going to come round somewhere like this to come into this position. Otherwise, um, we'd have various rocks coming round, and I'll just take the brown around something like that. So this area here is a piece of this uh, stratigraphy that's the light blue, would have been overlain by the yellow, but the yellow doesn't quite come down to outcrop. This uh, long outcrop width of this part of light blue, underlain by the brown, the brown doesn't come up to outcrop because there's a, a large area in here where the rocks are uh, gently dipping. And again, we can see this dark blue doesn't come into outcrop, so it must stay down. We must stay in this top unit of the light blue. I'm just going to tidy it up a bit uh, with the rubber because some of those thicknesses are a bit variable and some of those uh, axial traces don't quite work. So let's have a quick tidy. So that's a bit better, isn't it? Interestingly, this layer thickness is not conserved through. It's hard to make this fit completely given the thicknesses over here we've got on our cross section. So maybe there's a stratigraphic thickness variation as we come through, but it's very subtle and it comes through the diagram and that's fine. We've got all the layers coming through the folds, but there's one part of the cross section that still requires some attention over here on the northern end. And although we can make this nice fold structure continuous all the way through the main part of the section, here there's a fault. So I'm just going to draw this on like this, projecting it into the subsurface. And it's yellow rocks. Well, somewhere um, under these yellow rocks, we'd expect to see the blue uh, units. We don't know how thick the yellow is. It could be very thick indeed, but I'm just going to take it down here 
and suggests that it comes against the fault in this position. Uh, so this would be the uh, various light blue units and even down in here we'd expect the dark blue and more light blue coming through something like that maybe. So just to complete the cross section, I'm going to take that around like this, around that little uh, sin form, and that around like this, and maybe this one comes up like this, and maybe these units would come around like that in the subsurface. So we have a fault, it's bringing these rocks up over that, it's therefore a reverse fault, because it's, and it's placing deeper rocks onto shallower, that's the sense of movement, uh, so it's a thrust fault. So we can confront this fault, we don't have to use it anywhere else in our cross section, but overall the type of faulting fits the overall structural style of pushing these rocks together, making folds, but also shunting them over each other along a thrust fault. So there's our cross section, we can just colour in some components just to make it clearer. So there's our completed sketch cross section. For many purposes it may suffice, although what we could do now is take this idea and add precision using some cross section construction methods. But it's not a bad way of showing what the structure consists of across this area. I hope you found that a useful presentation.